When I look around on YouTube, I'm still blown away by the number of people that go into a bulking phase, let alone a dirty bulking phase. Now, when I start this video, it may sound one-sided, like I'm already starting this video strongly opposed to a bulking phase, but I promise you this video is nuanced. It breaks down the good and the bad of it. Understanding the psychology of why people bulk, I've talked to hundreds of people about this, and a lot of them find that they enter a bulking phase less about trying to build muscle and more about just needing a break from the cutting phase. So a lot of times they rebound into this, I'm just going to eat whatever I want or at least be lackadaisical about it. The issue is, is that the nature of the food quality for the excess calories matters. And I know there are specific people on YouTube that disagree. They go into their bulking phases, their dirty bulking phases. Candidly, they get kind of sloppy and they argue that even if it's processed, even if it's whatever calories, as long as it's calories to put them into an excess, they're going to build more muscle. Well, I'm here to break down if being in excess calories in general even does anything in the first place for muscle. Let's break it all down. First, we look at a study published in the American Journal of Clinical Nutrition. It took a look at a chronic surplus of protein, of carbs, of fat above maintenance to see how each individual macronutrient would impact muscle and fat. So they took overweight and normal people Okay, and they had them consume 150% of their daily calories. So that would mean if they normally eat 2,000 calories, they would eat 3,000. Basically, they're adding an entirely separate amount. They're eating 50% more than they normally would. Now, one group did it with excess carbs. Another group did it with excess dietary fat. They did this for two weeks, and it was quite interesting. They found that both the carb group and the fat group ended up gaining the same amount of fat. As a matter of fact, the amount of fat they gained was about 58%. So what that tells us is that it ultimately did not really matter at that rate, the macronutrient excess. All that mattered is that almost 60% of it was fat. And the other percentage could have been muscle. Some of it was water. The bottom line is, yeah, they built some muscle, but they mainly gained fat. And is that really worth it? Well, we'll break that down a little bit more as we go. But what about protein? What if you get all of your excess calories from protein and you're still just in a surplus, but it's coming from protein? Well, with this, we look at a study published in JAMA, look specifically at protein overfeeding. They had subjects eat 40% more calories. So they are at a 40% excess, okay? And they had them eat a low protein, moderate protein, or a high protein diet. When it came down to being in excess, believe it or not, the group that had the lowest protein intake actually gained the least amount of weight. What? That doesn't make any sense. Protein should be good for weight loss. Well, that was total weight. When they actually factored in fat-free mass and they factored in lean body mass, they found that the more protein that was consumed, the more lean body mass, and the higher the resting energy expenditure. However, the body fat levels among all the groups were the same. They all increased their body fat the same amount. The only difference was that the group that had higher protein gained more weight overall because they gained, yes, all that fat, but they also gained muscle. So the bottom line is that do the excess calories make you build more muscle? Not necessarily. The excess protein made them build more muscle, but the calories being in a surplus still made them all gain equal amounts of fat, which will still be a pain in the butt to get off later on. The reason is, is that protein is the only macronutrient that can directly stimulate muscle growth. So you can add all the calories in the world, but if the protein isn't there, you're not gonna build muscle. So eating extra donuts isn't going to contribute to the extra bicep. Could I just increase my protein and not even increase my calories? Could I even be in a slight deficit but increase my protein and build muscle? Well, believe it or not, there's a study that looked at this. This was published in the American Journal of Clinical Nutrition. It had subjects go in a 40% caloric deficit. That's a severe deficit. Okay, and it had them go in a low protein group or a high protein group, which had them consume 2.4 grams of protein per kilogram of body weight. Now, the cool thing with this study is it also had them do resistance training and it also had them do high intensity interval training, also incorporated cardio, it was very real world in that sense. They did this for four weeks and they found that the higher protein group lost more fat and built not a little, but a lot more muscle. 
just by having more protein, but still being in a 40% deficit. Your bulking phase doesn't need to exist. What you need is a protein increase phase. That's what seems to do it. You could literally get rid of some of the other food out of your diet and just increase the protein and call it a bulking phase. You don't need to be lazy and start eating donuts and pizza all the time. Don't get me wrong, I like pizza, you can eat it. Just doesn't need to be a staple to build muscle. Protein powders are great if you need to increase protein in a low calorie way. Plant-based, whey proteins, whatever. I also put a link down below for grass-fed, grass-finished beef from ButcherBox. The best way to do it is always going to be whole foods because A, it tastes better, but B, it's just got the micronutrients. It's got the food and the fuel that you really need. So that link down below is for ButcherBox. It's got grass-fed, grass-finished beef. It's got amazing chicken. It's got wild-caught salmon, scallops, all grass-fed, grass-finished stuff in the beef category. Then it gets delivered to your doorstep. Super easy. Plus, I've got custom boxes that you can check out, boxes that I personally use, like the cuts that I recommend, like the fillets, the New York, the ground bison, which I'm a big fan of. Anyway, so that link is down below. And if you check them out, you also get free ground beef for a year with your subscription. So it means every time you get a subscription order, you're also getting a free pack of ground beef, a two pack of ground beef, as a matter of fact, all grass fed, grass finished. So definitely check them out if you want the best tasting grass fed ground beef that I would recommend. Top line in the description. Will bulking itself, eating excess calories, lead to more muscle than say being at maintenance? Well, I'm gonna read you a quote from a study published in the Frontiers in Nutrition. There are no rigorously controlled investigations to date that have directly assessed the role of an energy surplus on resistance training outcomes such as muscle hypertrophy and strength power traits over an extended period of time. However, there is an array of circumferential evidence to support the idea that an energy surplus does enhance gains in fat-free mass, even independent of the resistance training stimulus. What we really would need is a study that looks at protein that is matched and unmatched alongside being in a surplus, maintenance, or deficit. And that study just doesn't exist. So to play devil's advocate here, let's look at a study that does sort of support that excess calories could build more muscle. So this study was published in the Journal of Sports Medicine and Physical Fitness. Okay, this took a look at a couple of different groups. They ate a normal diet. Okay, they, they same amount of calories between them. One group had a shake that was added into their diet daily. That was 356 grams of carbs and 106 grams of protein. That is a heck of a shake. The other group had just the carbs, okay? And then the other group was control, where they just ate the normal diet. So at baseline, all their calories were the same. The results were pretty darn interesting. The carb-only group saw quite an increase in fat-free mass. Like they were actually able to increase some muscle themselves just by increasing carbohydrates. The carb-protein group, the same. Like they were able to increase even a little bit more. But the interesting thing is, is that there were no strength gains across the board. So perhaps there was intracellular water that was coming in as a result of the carbohydrates. Since you take in about two to three grams of water for every one gram of carbohydrate you consume. So when you're increasing carbs, 356 grams, do the math how much water will go in intracellularly. I still find it odd that it didn't increase strength. So that's really one of the only stronger pieces of evidence that we have. So with that, let's understand the potential negative implications of having more body fat on you when you build muscle. For one, inflammation. And let's look at a study published in the Journal of Strength and Conditioning Research, so you're not just taking my word for it. This study took a look at individuals over the course of nine months, and it measured their trunk fat, how much fat they gained around the midsection, concurrently while resistance training. What they found is that those that ended up gaining more abdominal fat had more interleukin-6, which seemed to negate the hypertrophy effect from the resistance training more. So it was basically a negative predictor of muscle growth by having more inflammation. And more inflammation was correlated with more trunk fat. Now that is correlational. I understand that's not pure causation, but we do know that inflammation is not exactly good for the body, so it does add up. But let's talk about protein though. What about protein balance? And with this, we look at a study that was published in the Frontiers in Nutrition, and I'm gonna read you one of the first lines from this study in the first place. The muscle of individuals with obesity appears to be resistant to the anabolic action of targeted exercise regimes and protein ingestion when compared to normal. The more fat that was on the body, the less protein synthesis would happen from the resistance trained muscle. Why is this? 
Well, researchers speculate it has to do with insulin resistance, it has to do with the fact that uh, if they're overweight or obese, they have more inflammation, and that's leading to insulin resistance, which plays a big role in how protein synthesis is driven. More insulin-sensitive muscles typically have better protein synthesis, hence why whey protein, which is highly insulinogenic, can actually drive up more muscle growth because it spikes insulin and it triggers that muscle protein synthesis better. Then we have number three, the hormone side. And with this, don't take my word for it, there's a study published in Endocrinology that says this, there is a negative relationship between obesity and growth hormone. It is that simple. Like growth hormone is very critical for muscle building. And I'm not suggesting that anyone that's gonna just go on a bulk and gain 5% body fat is gonna be obese, but we do know that fat seems to play a negative role on growth hormone. Now, someone like myself, maybe I'm five, six percent body fat right now. If I were to go on a bulk and go up to 15 percent body fat, would I hurt my growth hormone levels? Playing a realistic card here, probably not because I'd still be within a somewhat healthy range. But if you're at 15 percent and you go to 30, that's not exactly something you want to do. There was even a study published in the European Journal of Endocrinology, and this was more of a longer tail study. It took a look at over 1,700 people. Now, the cool thing about this study is it followed them around for nine years. And over the nine-year period, those that gained more fat, specifically around the midsection, ended up having lower levels of testosterone. Is it reverse causation? Did the low testosterone cause the belly fat? Well, the cool thing is they were able to look at these people over time and notice that as the fat increased, the testosterone seemed to decrease shortly thereafter. So it seems as though adipose tissue and testosterone don't exactly go well together. And that's widely known because of aromatase, the enzyme that converts testosterone into estrogen and it kind of starts this vicious cycle of fat accumulation. So if you wanna eat excess calories to build muscle because it makes your brain feel good and you train harder, I don't see the problem, but you need to be responsible. The days of saying I'm gonna eat processed garbage and I'm just going to not look in the mirror and not care because I'm just trying to get stronger, I think you might be long-term doing yourself a disservice and your long-term muscle that you build might not be as much as the person that stays leaner and possibly even occasionally goes into a deficit and just keeps their protein levels in check. I'll see you tomorrow.